Hello, hello, Jamie Trell here, your favorite CPA and financial literacy coach. And today we're gonna to be talking about sales taxes. So the first question is, in general, who has to pay sales taxes? Now remember, sales tax is different than income taxes. So even if you don't have to pay income taxes, or even if you do, you may have to pay sales taxes. They are completely separate things, okay? And they are paid to states. So sales taxes are paid to individual states. And we're going to talk about which states you might have to pay sales taxes if you do indeed determine that you are subject to them here in a minute. But overall, sales tax is for sales of goods primarily. Okay. In general, most of the time, now there are some exceptions, so you may want to look this up, but in general, it relates to the sale of goods, not services. So if you have a fully service-based business and there is no good that is being exchanged, okay, then likely you're not gonna have to worry about sales taxes. Now, again, go check out the rules in your specific state where you are doing those services to make sure there can be special rules. If you have, let's say, a hybrid type of model, like maybe you're a photographer, that does a service, but then you also provide a product along with it. There can be some special rules, so you wanna make sure that you are up to date on those rules. But in general, we're talking about products. Now, usually that means physical products, but we are living in 2022, almost 2023, <laughs> and so we're also now talking about digital products. There have been some changes that have happened over the last several years related to sales taxes that you wanna know about, even if you're selling digital products that are not actually physical that you can't hold in your hands, this could still affect you. So the very first step in figuring out whether you need to pay sales taxes is to determine where you have nexus. Now, I don't wanna lose you here, but I do want to explain this concept because it is important. Now, nexus used to be physical nexus, basically meaning if you were in a particular place, if your company was based somewhere, if you were based somewhere, let's say, if you are your own uh, business, right? Wherever your company headquarters is, right? Maybe where you have employees as well, okay? Not contractors, but employees. That could all mean that you have physical presence in that state. Okay, so usually that's at least going to be where you are conducting business primarily, whether that's from home or whether you have an office, typically you're gonna have at least one state that you have physical presence in because you're working in the states, <laughs> right? Now, this is how companies that uh, did not have physical presence specifically in a state, maybe e-commerce companies and things like that, they ended up getting out of sales taxes for a long time. So if you remember, you could often, you know, years ago, you could order things off of the internet and oftentimes you wouldn't have any sales tax associated to it. But the Wayfair decision changed that. So you guys probably have heard of Wayfair. It sells furniture and other types of goods. Well, they went to court on this whole issue and ultimately it was determined that yes, e-commerce businesses, even if they don't have physical presence within a state, they may have to pay sales taxes if they have what's called economic presence in the state, okay? So what the heck is economic presence? Well, that's where it gets a little sticky. Okay, now, real quick. Before we get any further, I wanna jump in with a quick interjection because this is an important point. So stay with me, come back to me <laughs> if, you, if I've lost you, okay? Now, an important point to understand is that states have different rules as it relates to when you need to pay sales taxes. Now we know that rates change based on the states and the locations, but also the actual rules on the types of things that have sales taxes assessed on it, okay? and also on even if you qualify to pay sales taxes in that state. So just to make it super duper complicated, every state's gonna have a different rule. And you might think, well, don't I just need to understand the rules in the state where I'm based or my company is based? And unfortunately, that's not the case. Whether you pay sales tax or not is not determined by where your location is, although that is one way to get physical presence, but it relates to where the customer is. Okay, so that's really, really important, especially if you're selling over state lines. If you sell everything within a small geographical area in one state, then you're good. You probably only have to worry about one state, right? But if you are selling online, oftentimes you're probably selling to multiple different states, whether those are physical products or digital products. So it is important to understand the rules of all the states that you sell to, okay? All right, let's jump back to it. So going back to economic nexus, right? 
You know you have nexus if you have physical presence, but economic nexus is a little bit fuzzier. And often getting economic presence in a particular state means that you have a certain number of transactions or certain dollar amount of transactions within that state. Now this is really good news for my very small sellers, right? Oftentimes, if you are doing you know, handmade goods and things like that, if you're selling on Etsy or Shopify or something like that, you may not meet those thresholds unless you have a pretty big operation, okay? Now, for my bigger sellers who do have more transactions, this could affect you. Now, how much are we talking? Again, varies by state, but the threshold for economic nexus in most cases is somewhere around $100,000 in revenue in that state and sales in that state and or 200 transactions. Okay, so oftentimes it's or you want to check the specific state and see. So you may not meet you know, the $100,000, but if you're selling very low ticket items, you might meet the 100 or 200 sales, right? So if you wanna check out all the different states that you sell into and get an idea of what those thresholds are to have economic nexus in that state, go to this article right here that I've pulled up from TaxJar, which is a really, really great service that I do recommend for tracking and paying your sales taxes. They can make something that is super complicated so, so much easier, especially if you have multiple states that you do have nexus in, okay? But if you go to this article, you're gonna see here some background information that's gonna talk about specifically that Wayfair case that I mentioned, right? And it's gonna come down here to talk about the different states. So you see it's gonna give you information for each individual state. So you can go down here through here and see which states you sell into, right? And see what their rules generally are. So this is going to be a very common one the, in Alaska that they have here, 100,000 more or sales in the state or 200 more transactions in the state, right? Um, and that's over an annual time period. So you'll want to be keeping up with that. And if you're close to it, you wanna make sure that you're aware that you might be close. And you can kind of go down the line here and see, but you can see a lot of them have standardized to this 200 transactions or $100,000, but not all of them. So definitely take a look through this. Again, jamietroll.com forward slash nexus is where you can check this article out. That was jamietroll.com forward slash nexus, and you can check out all the states yourself. So now that we've gone through step number one, hopefully you have a general idea of where you may have nexus, okay? So you figured out where you have physical presence, i.e. physical nexus, where you're physically located, right? And you've also thought about economic nexus, where you might have an economic presence, and that is related to those thresholds that we just talked about. So hopefully at that point, you might have figured out maybe you only have one state, right? That state in which you live and work, or maybe you have multiple states if you have high volume transactions, high dollar amounts, or if you have physical presence in multiple states, okay? Now, what do you do if you have to pay sales taxes in multiple states, right? The first thing that you're gonna do is register on those states' website, okay? You do not want to collect sales tax ahead of registering on those state websites, okay? So usually it's gonna be the State Department of Revenue website where you're going to sign up, and then you are going to start collecting that sales tax. It's actually, the worst thing you could do to collect sales tax from your customers and have that as a line item that you're actually actively collecting and then never remit that to the state. So ultimately sales tax is just a pass through, right? It shouldn't cost you extra money, but you're gonna collect that sales tax when you make the sale and then you're going to give that exact amount of money to the state and to each individual state that you owe that money to. So net net, there's a zero impact from the standpoint of the same money that comes in is gonna be the money that goes out. So just make sure you're not over collecting or underpaying when you're talking about your sales tax liability. Now, if you do wind up needing to pay sales taxes in multiple different states, don't do this on your own. There are so many softwares out there that you can integrate with the systems if you're using Etsy or Shopify or your own website, right, to make these sales, then you can go ahead and use a system like TaxJar in order to help you do that. So they integrate with many different platforms and it can help you collect and remit sales tax. So there, there are a few different platforms. TaxJar is the one that I recommend. There's another good one you can check out called Avalara. And either one of those can be a good option if you 
want to check out Tax Jar and you want to use my partner link, that would be amazing. It helps support this channel. Go to jamietrollett.com forward slash tax jar. It will take you right to their website and you can sign up and check out everything about tax jar and see if it's a good fit for you. Now, really quickly, before we end, I want to talk about online businesses and digital products specifically. Okay. And that is what I sell primarily are digital products. So how does it work in the world of digital products? Well, it's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> and a lot of digital product sellers that I know oftentimes don't actually collect addresses because you don't really need to, right? All you really need is an email address in order to deliver a digital product. So it's a lot less likely in this space for people to be collecting and remitting sales taxes, but that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to. So one thing that I'll say is again, the same economic thresholds exist as existed when we were talking before. So the typically $100,000, let's say in revenue in most states or 200 transactions, that is also going to apply to you as a digital seller, right? But one other thing to consider is there are states that have different rules around digital products. So in some states, most digital product sales are taxed as long as you have Nexus. In some states, even if you have Nexus, you don't have to pay sales taxes in certain situations related to digital products. So for example, one of the common exceptions to having to pay sales tax, even if you do have Nexus, right, in a particular state when it comes to digital products, is if that digital product comes with a significant live experience, right? So maybe in that case, really what you're selling is really more of a service and the product is just kind of a sub, you know, side product. It's not really what you're selling. If the primary thing that you're selling is a service, oftentimes you can make the case that that is not taxable because what the consumer is buying is a service. So again, each individual state is going to have different rules around that. You can Google, you know, sales tax, digital products, your state <laughs> and see what comes up. Some states don't have anything specific and that leaves it up to interpretation, which is always super fun. <laughs> and some states actually have started making specific rules around it, but there's still going to be some room for interpretation related to what you actually sell and how you actually sell it. So it does get a little dicey. We're still a little bit behind the times as far as the tax guidelines and what actually the world is like these days, go figure. <laughs> and that's probably going to be the case for a while. So you want to watch it because these things are changing. They are changing fairly rapidly and they're typically changing in the direction of more sales tax being assessed, of course, because these states do not want to lose out on revenue, even though sales are going online. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I would love for you to give me a subscribe. Also check out Tax Jar if that's something that you are interested in. And I've also put a playlist of other amazing business resources that we recommend for growing small businesses. And I will see you next time.